Well, PC builders, the day has finally come, and AMD has released the new 9800X 3D. A follow-up to last generation 7800X 3D, this new chip promises to be the fastest gaming CPU ever made. Did AMD live up to those lofty expectations? Is there anything AMD had to give up to achieve these goals? And if you are building a new PC from scratch, is this the CPU you want in it? Let's find out. Taking a look at our test system, and normally we'd be using the ASUS X670E Crosshair Hero, although for this review we are going to be using the X870E. This shouldn't make a big difference in our comparisons, but it is the beginning of a retest of all of our AMD CPUs with faster memory, so look forward to that. But for now we'll be using 32GB of DDR5-6000 memory, an RTX 4090, and Windows 11 Professional with VBS enabled. For the specs of all the other systems, please check out the link in the description, as well as the rest of our 30-page review. But for now, let's get to the gaming benchmarks. I like starting these reviews at 4K for two reasons. One, since not everybody's going to be gaming on a 4090, it's one way of showcasing a GPU-limited scenario. And for two, if you are gaming at 4K and you're going to prioritize quality over frame rate, that a new CPU may not make that big of a difference. That being said, if you want the most frames at the glorious 4K resolution, that's going to come from the 9800X 3D. It is basically tied with the 7800X 3D, and just a bit faster than the 14900K and the 9950X. Dropping down to 1440p does allow the 4090 to stretch its legs, and now the 9800X 3D is still the fastest gaming CPU you can buy, with last generation's Ryzen 7 7800X 3D coming in at 97.2% of its performance, the 14900K at 95.9% of its performance, and the Core Ultra 9 285K and Ryzen 9 9950X at 93.3 and 92.4% respectively. The move to 1080p spreads out the results even more, with now the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D only delivers about 96% of AMD's newest gaming flagship, Intel's Core i9 14900K is still hanging strong at 92.8, but the difference between gaming CPUs and non-gaming CPUs is more apparent looking at the Ryzen 9 9950X and Core Ultra 9 285K, both delivering less than 90% of the 9800X 3D's performance. When looking at the 1% lows, both of those CPUs are good for around 130 FPS at minimum, but the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D is noticeably better at 145. AMD's best case scenario for the 9800X 3D is going to be at 720p. Not a resolution that most people are gaming at, at least natively, but with new GPUs always on the horizon, it's a good way of simulating a GPU upgrade in the future. And lo and behold, it does give the 9800X 3D the biggest win of the day, being over 7% faster than the 7800X 3D. It's about 13% faster than the Core i9-14900K, with the Ryzen 9 9950X and Core Ultra 9 285K lagging noticeably behind. But it isn't easy to make a CPU that's good at everything, and if the 720p results highlighted the 9800X 3D's strengths, then the application results showcases its weaknesses. On average, it performs more like a Core i7-13700K or a Ryzen 9 7900, which really isn't too bad and is significantly better than the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. But while the Ryzen 9 9950X and Core Ultra 9 285K were about 20% slower while gaming than the 9800X 3D, now they're about 20% faster in applications. The Core i9 14900K does score pretty well in both tests, but it does use a lot of power. And speaking of power consumption, the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D does do pretty well here, using the same amount of energy as the Core Ultra 7 265K when fully loaded. That is significantly better than the other three high-end flagships, each using well over 200 watts when fully loaded, but all of these are comparatively energy hogs when we take a look at the 7800X 3D. Using only a minuscule 74 watts when fully loaded, 
it does give the 9800X3D its first L when comparing between the generations. The margins do decrease when isolated for gaming performance with a 9800X3D only using 65 watts, which is still more than the 46 watts of the 7800X3D, but it is much more comparable. That does leave the Ryzen 7 7800X3D as the most efficient high-end gaming CPU, getting 4.25 frames per watt compared to the 3.3 for the 9800X3D, but compared to the other high-end cards that are getting 2 frames per watt or less, they're both still pretty efficient. Comparing thermals does bring all these CPUs closer together, and squeezing this chart down just a little bit, we can see all these CPUs aren't too hard to manage given a decent cooler, but the 9800X3D is 10 degrees warmer than the 7800X3D. Taking a quick look at overclocking performance, and when enabling PBO Max and setting the curve optimizer to negative 20, we did get an extra 1.2% when gaming at 720p, and when paired with faster memory, we were able to bump that up to 1.8%, but considering both of those settings do increase the overall power usage, it's up to you if those minimal gains are worth it. And it's up to you whether or not the CPU is worth it in the first place. In its worst case scenario, application performance, it does hang pretty close to its contemporaries, being a little bit better value than the Core Ultra 9 285K and the Ryzen 9 9950X, while delivering a little less value than its younger cousin, the 7800X3D, and definitely less value than the Core i9-14900K. When it comes to pure gaming though, the 9800X3D beats the non-gaming flagships pretty handily in terms of value, with the best of them, the 14900K, costing $2.2 per frame, with the 9800X3D only costing $2 per frame. Last generation's Ryzen 7 7800X3D is a better value, costing you only $1.70 per frame, and for the value, it is pretty compelling. But it isn't the fastest gaming CPU you can buy. That's the 9800X3D. It uses more power, and it costs more, but that's the price if you want to go fast.